Do you want to create games in Unreal Engine, but don't know exactly how to start? Here we will create a 3D platformer game while learning how to use blueprints to create the mechanics. Also, we will reach a gameplay flow for our game in a matter of minutes, so we can test the game very frequently and build on top of it. There are no requirements for this tutorial, but knowing your way around a viewport will make development faster. When you finish these tutorials, you should be more comfortable with blueprints and also have a good idea on what it takes to develop a game. And before I forget, if you want to support us in any way, be sure to check out our store. We have a lot of cool stuff like a free blueprints course, another to model a castle inside Unreal, and our marketplace assets that were made with care and effort. If you want to learn more, you can consider becoming a member of our channel where you will get exclusive tutorials that can take your game development skills to the next level. Let's start by creating the project. Be sure to choose Unreal Engine 5. And in the project browser, we will create a blank project. We will be starting this project from zero. So I don't need to update the tutorial. It happened to me before that I use a template and that template changed. So I want to avoid that. So let's just create a blank project. Blueprints is fine. And let's call it my 3D platformer. And create. Now that the project loaded, let's let me put this miss, update the, the file. If I press play, I shouldn't have anything here, only this example map. And now what I'm gonna do is import the needed assets that we will use in this tutorial. These assets are free and you can find it in the marketplace. Here in the Unreal Marketplace, if you search for Hour of Code, you will find this project. It will say that it's for 4.26. Doesn't matter, just create it and we will use this content. Whenever you create the project, you need to find where usually you store your projects. In my case, this folder is called Unreal Projects and it's in Documents. And it should be under Unreal Engine Hour of Code. What we need to do here is just open the content folder, search for Hour of Code and Teachers Marketplace. We will copy this. copy and we will paste it in our project here content right click it show in explorer and paste it here this will probably break some stuff needed but i only wanted the assets here i'll press import just in case and you will see that this has some blueprints inside it and some maps, but we won't really be using them. We just need the assets. Architecture, there's some roofs, and we will see how we're gonna use all these assets. But for now, that's what I needed to get before starting development. Now we will create the character. This is a key element in any game. So let's first create a folder for our project. And here it'd be three. I'm just creating a folder with the same name of my project so I know where I'm putting all of my assets. Here, because the character is a core feature of our project without it we won't have any game so i'm gonna create a core folder and then here i'll create a folder 
that will be used for anything that the player needs to have. Now, to create a character, we just need a blueprint class. And here, in the common section, we will select character. This is a blueprint class that will be useful for any type of biped character. I'm going to call it main character. This class already comes with some capsule component, a narrow component to know where we are facing, and then a mesh, a skeletal mesh. Yeah. This will be the representation of our character inside the game. And it also has this character movement where we can tweak how our character will move. And before I mentioned that this is used for biped characters be because they already have, for example, swimming, walking, falling, flying, etc. But it's especially for bipeds because we have a capsule component that if we have, for example, a horse here, it won't fit. So if I needed to make a playable horse, it will probably be a pawn, not a character. So just take that in consideration. For this example, this character blueprint is just fine. We need a visual representation of the character and we just need to go to the mesh component Let's change this skeletal mesh here in the details panel and select the epic character rig. This is the asset that we imported from the other files. And if you open any of these files, they will probably be errors. So just ignore them or just don't open them. Now we just need to bring it down a little bit and rotate it. To be looking forwards. In the real, when whenever I say forward, or uh, or when whenever someone else says forward, it means X positive. And well, C is the how high or low something is, the vertical value. So it changes from engine to engine. Just keep in mind here in real, C is the vertical value. And X, positive X, is forward. Let's adjust this capsule component a little bit. So it matches better my character. So the radius and also the half height. Maybe 100 should be fine. And the radius, 40. Now, if I press play here... We will see that nothing changes. We need to tell our game that we want to use this character. So let's create what it's called a game mode. Right click here. Let's create a new folder, folder called framework. And the game mode is part of the Unreal gameplay framework. Let's just create a blueprint class. Here we will have the game mode. These common classes are all part of the gameplay framework. And the game mode specifically is in charge of defining the default values of our games and also the rules of the game, especially rules that have to do with the state of the game, like losing, winning, starting, etc. And I'm also going to call it GM from game mode and my 3D platformer. Now, Let's open it and we will go to the details panel or the class defaults if you don't have it. Just press on class default and you will have these settings. Here I need to assign the default pawn class. This is the character that will be used by default. So here I'm going to select my main character. Let's compile. If we still press play, it's, it will still be in not using the character. So let's go to the project settings, edit, project settings, 
or here in settings, project settings. We will go to maps and modes and we will define the default game mode. Let's use my GM, my 3D platformer. So with this in place, in any map that doesn't have a game mode, it will use my character. And right now I have this kind of first person character, but we can see that it's already in, in the game. Now that we have this character, when we press play, we need to talk about a little bit the three key elements for any type of gameplay. This is the character, the camera, and the controls. The, char the character is how the player will represent itself in the game. In this case, this is my character, and this is how I see, I'll see myself. Now, I need some perspective, like the camera, if I want to do a platformer like we're gonna do a third person camera will be fine a strategy game will probably use a top-down camera action game probably a first person camera like this one so you need to define the camera somewhere and then we will define the controls that are the third key element so let's start by the camera let's open my blueprint character we don't really need the game mode anymore, for now. And here in the main char character, I need to define a camera. We can add a camera here. And this will make a, cam a floating camera. Because I know that later I will want to check the collisions. So if I have... A wall here, I don't want the camera to clip inside it. I It will be better if I create a component called spring arm. And it will serve as an arm to put the camera in. So here I created under the camera. I really don't want it to be this way. So I just delete it select the root component, capsule component, and create it again. So now I have this spring arm, I'll put the camera inside it. And this is just attaching the components. Now you will see my camera is here and it's good to reset any transformation I did to this camera. So I'll reset it here, location. And it should be every value in zero. This will allow us to see how this spring arm is working. And if we want to change the target arm length, it will affect our camera. So if I press play now, I will see the perspective of the camera. And also, I can change this and it will be affected in our gameplay. For now, maybe 600 should be fine. So now with the character and the camera, we need to define the controls so we can move around our character. To define the inputs or how we're going to control this character, we will go again to the project settings, here edit, project settings also, and we will find the category called inputs. Here in inputs, we will have action mappings and axis mappings. Axis mappings are inputs, uh, here it is, that will receive a value between, well, usually between zero, well, minus zero, minus one, excuse me, and one. So if I wanted to, for example, is used for the movement, let's add move forward and I could select here the key, or if I'm using a gamepad, the input for the gamepad, or also I can press here and press the key I want to use. So in this case, move forward, W sends a value of one. It's not really necessary to create another one called move 
backwards. Ooh, excuse me. Or something like this. It's not necessary because here in move move forward I could put another input like like I just did accident here another input press s and this will be scale minus 1 well the same thing I'm going to do for move right and this will be d scale 1 and s no s a excuse me, value minus one. Now, these are axis mappings and they usually work really well with the gamepad because if I add, for example, here, the gamepad usually here is the thumbstick in Y, move forward. This will give me an, ex an scale. So if I'm just moving the joystick a little bit, it will give me 0 0.2, 0 0.3, etc. So we can make the character walk. And here, move right usually is gamepad left. Where is it? X. Now, the action mappings are different, are a little bit more simple. Oh, and I created two, excuse me. It's usually just a key that will be pressed and released. So for specific actions that have a clear start and an end, they work really well. For example, the jump. Jumping, we can add here the spacebar, or maybe in terms of gamepad, it's usually the face bottom, and bottom bottom, <laughs> yeah. This is in, should be A or B, depending on which type of gamepad you have. And with these inputs created, we can go back to our main character. Let's go to the event graph. And here in the event graph, we will create any functionality or interaction that our character will have. Let's create a simple jump, for example. So let's just right click and press the jump, well, type jump, you will have a lot of jumps, and this has to do with the blueprint we're using, that is a character blueprint, but what we want is the input, input, action event, jump. This will have the name that we assign it, so if you change this name, you should reflect it here. So jump, getting a jump to work is really easy if we are using this kind of character class because we can just press call jump and when we release the character excuse me the key in this case spacebar we will stop jumping now if we press play we still can't move but we can press spacebar and our character jumps. With our character jumping, it's time to add the movement. So let's go back to the main character blueprint and let's save it. Be sure to periodically save everything. And now we need the move forward event and the move right. We will create a simple way of making this work move forward and then we will explain in more detail so here's move forward and also here is move right our character already comes with a way of adding input and we can use that node by right clicking and add movement input we just need to connect it and if I, for example, move forward, we said that X positive was forward, let's just put one. And if I press play, we will see that with this scale value, I will go forward automatically. If I connect the axis value of this move forward, 
Right now, the axis value is zero because I'm not pressing W. If I press W, I'll move forward. If I press S, I'll move backward. The same thing can be done with the move right. And let's just change it. For example, and the scale value should be axis. And here, instead of X, X will be 0 and Y will be 1. Let's press play. And now I do have this kind of movement. We also need to know that our character should be able to move the camera around. And that thing will cause a little bit of problems with this type of implementation, but we will see it along the way. Let's add the camera movement. Here, axis mapping. I'm just going to call it turn. Usually is when you're moving your camera from left to right. And here, I'm going to select mouse, mouse X. And well, because I'm already adding the controller support, we can add gamepad and it will be right thumbstick X. Then we will add another axis mapping and this will be called look up. Here it's mouse Y and you could also add the gamepad right thumbstick. So remember that you sh maybe the gamepad is not translating exactly with the mouse movement, you can create another input specifically for the gamepad so you can change the scales or maybe the way you handle the movement. For now, this is more than enough for this example. So let's use this. Let's create the action event called turn axis event excuse me and then the event called look up here it is and here we can add some yo add controller yo input we're gonna connect it like this and this one should be add controller pitch input if you don't know what Joe pitch roll is, whenever we have a camera, and hopefully I can add a camera really fast here. This camera will be fine. Whenever we have a camera, if our camera is rotating this way, it's called Joe. If our camera is rotating up and down, it's called pitch. And if our camera is rotating on its sides like this, it's called raw. roll. So that's why here turning should change the jaw and lookup should change the pitch. If I press play, now with my, my mouse, I can turn around and right now I can't look up or down. But let's see what happens with my controls. Now if I press W, we are still going to the same direction. Why is that happening? Because we are only adding movement in the X value. So we need to change the way we are adding this movement. And that's what we're going to do next. Let's fix first the camera rotation because I only can move my camera in this axis, but not in the Y axis. And if we see these events, we can see the mention of the controller. Controller jaw input, controller pitch input. Controllers are a class that will possess our character. So if I press play, this is just a character. And if I add another character to, to the map here, let's just add another main character. You can open this by using control P and here main character. So I now have two characters, but I'm not controlling one of them. This is because the way that inputs are sent 
is by a class called controller. In our case, the player controller. So a player controller will be a class, a blueprint that we are not seeing, but we are constantly interacting with it. And this class is sending the inputs to any pawn or character that we tell it to control or in this case in Unreal is called possess. So if my player controller is possessing this character, then it, whenever I press W, it will move, make it move forward. But because I'm not possessing this one, nothing is happen, happening to this character. In Unreal, we can unpossess and then possess another character again. It's just a way of changing what we're controlling. But in this case, we are adding the rotation to the controller, so we need to use that rotation in order to move the camera. So here in the spring arm, that is this component, we will go here in camera settings and use pawn control rotation. This refers to the controller that we were talking about and we will press true. Now let's press play and we can move it side to side, but also up and down. Now, for my taste, I find that, that the Y axis should be inverted for me to be comfortable. So you can either do it here by look up, multiplying it by minus one, no, not minus 10, that's too much, minus one, play, and it will be inverted. Or you can also, if you want to keep it clean, you can also here in lookup, just put minus one, and then it will also be inverted. Okay, so with the camera working, we can then make this movement work. Now to fix the movement, I would need to know where my camera is facing and not where our character is facing. Why not use our character? Because it will probably look a lot better if here we go to class defaults and in pawn, let's uncheck use controller rotation jaw. Now if I press play, we can look around our character and our character is not using the controller rotation. But this will mean that if I'm moving, want to move forward like this, instead of using where our character is looking like this, we want to know where our camera is looking forward, that it will be this direction. So to get that direction, we will first make a little bit of space, a little bit, and just like we added some controller input, we can get that control rotation. With this value, I can know where my character is looking. Now, this is a rotation, a rotator, excuse me, and we need a vector for the direction. We can ask here, get control rotation, I want the forward vector for my forward movement and I want the right vector for my move right. Now, I could connect it like this and it will work. If I press W and I keep pressing W, it will move forward right and every time I move right doesn't matter where my camera is looking to it will be still moving right and in order to show it better I can go here in my character movement I can go to character movement rotation settings and here I will use orient rotation to movement just check this and press play 
and our character will rotate towards the movement. And that looks a lot better, actually. But we need to do a little transformation to these vectors because in the case that our character could move in the C vector, this is giving me a vector that also moves in the C axis. How can we see this value? We can use this useful node called print string and just connect our vector to it. Let's press play. Here we see the rotation value. If we move our camera, then I'm seeing that C value change and I really don't want it because it can give us some problems later on. So that's why I'm gonna just delete it. Here in the world direction, I'm gonna drag it out and press make, make a vector. And this one, I will split it. I saw that I don't need the C value, so I just need the X and Y value. So our movement is always parallel, parallel with the ground floor. And I will do the same with this word direction. Split and X and Y. And now if I connect this vector to this print string, then I'm only gonna get the X and Y values and this should be working by. Now, let's just delete this print string and we have this um, movement working just because of organization's sake. I, I like it if I have a little bit of freedom with this and also usually stacks things like this, this, so it's easier to show more code. Something like this. Yeah, and it's a little bit more compact. And it's also good practice to select the notes and make some comments here, for example. Select everything, press the letter C, and just type movement input, and here below, just C again, mouse, oh, well, camera, camera input, and now everything is good and tidy. Now that we have a character that can move around, can jump around, it will be a good idea to have a level to test it and change some values. So here, I'm gonna create a new level. New level, let's just use empty open world because it brings some good optimizations. And we have the world partition and we will also be able to use one file per actor that we can explain what it is a lot later, but for now, these words should be enough for us. Especially if you're gonna be working with other developers, but if you're not, then you can just new level and empty level. Let's make it nice by adding a directional light, and it will be good to have some something to see. For example, this cube. Let's just put it in the zero, zero. And stretch it a little bit. We will change this eventually. Now, if I press play, I won't see anything because there is no light here. So I need to add first my light, directional light. It will be good also to add some visual effects here, sky atmosphere. So we have some sky to get rid of this black void. We can also add visual effects and 
and exponential height for that's a lot better if we wanted clouds we can add visual effects volumetric clouds so now it looks a lot more nicer with this type of lightning objects it will be good to have a space for them and here I'm gonna put them in minus 400 and 400 and I will copy this value I will paste it in another one and just add it 100 and I will do the same for the rest of them I just want to to know that oops ah, 600 was too much paste it again I just want to know that if I have if I found one of these in the map, the other ones are near. There it is. And this one, the same. Paste it. And now it will be plus 300. Also, just click on the four of them. And let's create them their own folder here. Like, right click it, move it create new folder and let's just call it lighting just so it's easier to search for them and well if I wanted to disable all of them we can do it perfect now this cube like really doesn't reflect our cheerful character so what we're gonna do is just replace it. We're gonna search for any asset that we can use here. Content. And because I don't really remember where our assets are, we can just use a filter inside the content browser or well, content drawer. Filter, let's just search for an static mesh. And here it will show us any static mesh inside the folder that I choose. So here, it will change depending on which folder or I can just search in all the project. And we should have floating island M should be fine, I believe. Yeah, that, that, that should be good. So let's just drag and drop it. Maybe it's really too big. Uh, for now, should be fine. Let's just put it on the zero, zero. And if we press play, we're spawning wherever our camera is. We need to define a point where to spawn our character. So we will use this player here in basic player start. You can also just type here, click player start and you can find it. This player start will, will define the location and rotation of our character. So we can put it like here, doesn't matter where our camera is. Let's press play and it will start there. Great. Now we can add some assets and tweak the behavior of this character. That it now can jump, but we should really tell it how high it should jump. So, for example, here I see I saw some crates. And maybe it's it's too large, right? If there isn't another one smaller, then let's just reduce its value. Let's scale it to maybe this size, 0 0.5, like half of the value. Yeah, that should be fine. I should be able to jump this. And, oh, in, in case I, I just jumped the gun, you can move, rotate, and scale, and change this widget by using these buttons, or by using the hotkeys here, W, E, and R.
So now let's change how much this character jumps. I will go to my main character and the, everything related to the movement behavior of this character will be with the character movement. Let's click on the character movement and also the search for the jump. Jumping and falling here I want to jump twice as high. Let's just put multiply by two. Let's press play. And now I am jumping twice as high. But let's take in consideration that it is a platformer, so you really need to be very very precise on your jumping. So we will go back to the jumping event input action jump we had jump and stop jumping why did we put stop jumping because inside this character and uh, let me just return this value this jumping value to to the one before i had you can also search here jump and i'm gonna return it to the default volume so this stop jumping is here because this character has already functionality related to jump. We can go here to the class defaults and we have jump, jump max count and also jump max hold time. If you needed a double jump, you can put here two, press play, and now we have a double jump or triple jump. Just put here three press play and triple jump we have now for for now i only want one jump but i will tweak this value called max hold time and this allow us for example if i put one that whenever i press play and i press the space bar and just release it immediately i do a small jump but if i hold it it will do a bigger jump. So it's, it's pretty nice, right? Now, I don't really want to hold this space bar like one second. I only need to hold it, for example, 0 0.2. 0 0.2. Oh, that's the max count. Excuse me. 0 0.2. Let's test it. And a little jump would be this one, max jump would be that one. Right, so now I can tweak the jumping velocity, maybe 600 should be fine. That's a little jump, and a max jump should be this one. So maybe 0 0.3 could be the value that I'm looking for. Because I want to, with a little jump, reach this value, this box, and with a holded jump, I should be able to reach two stack boxes, like this. And I don't seem to reach, so let's just increase that, that hold time. Maybe 0 0.4. Almost there. And 0 0.5. So it's a character that can jump a lot. Okay, that, that should be fine. Now, with this knowledge we also should be able to change how fast it should fall. Right now it's too floaty for me. Maybe we can up the gravity scale, maybe two or two, three. And that feels a lot better for me, actually. Am I still able to reach there? No, but maybe it's better. It was jumping too much for me, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it's jumping too much. 
I, I, I didn't really like it that much. So let's... What happened here? Oh, simulation. 0 0.3 was fine. And here, max jump 1 is fine. Let's just add some jumping. Or, well, let's just test it like this. This is a little jump. A bigger jump should let me reach it. Yeah, it's it's fine. Just a little bit of jumping to tweak it better. Where's my jumping? Here it is. 50 should make the difference. And now, yeah, that's a lot better. A lot better. If we wanted to change the movement speed, we can also do it here in the character movement. We can go to walking and here max walk speed. We can change it maybe to be a little bit faster, 80. And now I'm liking it even more. Now it's looking pretty good. Well, it's feeling pretty good. Our character feels pretty good. Our camera feels also pretty good, and the controls are what any player would expect. So yeah, that's great. The last thing we would need to do with this character is to make it move. It's really not appealing if our character is just sliding around. So we're gonna do just that now. And also, you can tweak the movement of the character to your liking. Maybe you don't want it to jump like this. It's fine. It's your game after all. So let's make it move around. We, we will see here. We will click on the character, press F just to center it. And we will find the skeletal mesh. Here, we can also define the animations. And if we define, for example, here, animation mode, Asset, we can define any asset that exists. For example, here should be, I don't know, idle. But this will mean that when we press play, it will be stuck in that animation. So what we need to do is use an animation blueprint. So let's select the skeletal mesh component here, animation blueprint. And right now we don't have an animation blueprint that works for us. This one is probably broken, so we also want to create one from scratch, just to not depend on anyone else. Okay, so because it will have to do with this character, let me remove this filter. Let's go to my 3D platformer folder and let's just call it this folder characters. Just in case I have more characters and folder how this one is called epic character so let's call it epic character let's right click animation and animation blueprint we already have done uh, let's select this specific skeleton epic character rig skeleton and create let's just call it animation blueprint epic character and let's open it like i was saying we already have done a video on the animation blueprint so I'm not gonna cover the fundamentals here so you will just need to copy what I'm doing here okay so we need a way to define the states of the animation of this character let's just right click here in the anim graph you don't have it you can find it here here is also the event graph so here in the anim graph let's just right click and create a state machine Let's just put state machine and it was add new state machine. Let's just call it locomotion because it will be the any motions that will have my car that will drive my character and I'm going to connect the result here. Let's just double click this state machine and let's create an idle state. Well, let's create a state first, add state. And we're gonna call it idle 
Movement. Oh, idle running. Let's just open it. And we will have to use this. There should be a blend space here. Idle run. Let's just add it here. Let's connect it like this. And this speed, let's put it as a variable. Now, let's compile it. So the variable exists. And we will go to the event graph. Here, I'm just going to ask for my character. Let's just cast to a character. This is just making sure that this owner is a character. If it isn't, our character will just slide around. But if it is, I want to know one, the speed. And we, we can also get the speed from here. Just get, get velocity. And ask for the length. And that is the speed. I'm going to put this here just in case. Speed, let's set it up because I'm going to need it when I'm jumping. Set the speed like this. Let's save this, compile it. Now, if I go to this tab, the animation preview, editing values, edit preview, we can change the speed and it should reflect the value. But right now I'm driving this value from the blueprint. Let's just, oops, let's just remove that pin right now and just move it around to see if my blend space is working. It is working. So speed, let's just connect it like this. Compile it. Let's go back to my blueprint main character. And here in animation, well, select the character mesh, select animation, anim class. Let's look for our animation blueprint. And when we press play now, it should be moving around. Great. Now, but if we jump, it's still doing this. So it's not really working for us. Let me see if this character has a jump animation. It should have. Whenever we open an animation blueprint, we can check the skeleton of the mesh that we are using, the skeleton mesh, the skeleton, skeleton mesh, and the animations. So here, I will search for a jump. And we have a lot of them. Jump, run, jump, end, loop start jump up we're just gonna use this run and end so let's go back to our animation blueprint let's here in the idle running we can return to the state machine like this by using these crumbs and let's create another state let's put jump start jump loop and jump end and we're gonna connect this jump end back to the idle running something like this now these are different states Let's just fill the states with animations. Here I'm going to search jump. And I'm going to see if this jump loop, does this works? Should work good enough. And what's this run loop? I, I believe it's the same. So let's just use the jump animations. There's here. Uh, this one doesn't doesn't have too much personality to, to them. So I'm just going to use the jump up for the jump start. In the jump loop, I will use a jump up loop and connect it. Oh, jump up is a 
the whole animation. Oh, excuse me then. Jump loop is correct here. Jump loop is the jump loop. In jump start, it will be the jump up start. Yeah, this one. Let me replace this jump up with the jump start. And in the jump end, we will use the jump up end. Now we need to end, if we press compile, it will show us some error because we're not entering these states. There's no way for us to enter this. And these are the transitions rules. So for example, if I want to go from idle running to jump start, probably I want to know if the player is in the air. So I'm going to promote this to a variable and I'm going to call it is in the air or maybe is falling. So if it's in the air, or, or let's just call it is falling. Is in air falling? Yeah, let's call it this. It's falling. And now in the event graph, we need to set up that value called is falling. Is falling. Get is falling. Well, set is falling. Excuse me. And the character does have a way of knowing that. So we can ask is falling. And we can connect this directly. That's why I needed this cast to the character. Now, whenever this animation ends, I don't want it to loop. I just want it to play once and then go to the loop one. So let's, here in the jump start, click it. In the detail panel, loop animation and check it. So when this ends, I want it to reproduce, well, to play this jump loop so here in the transition i'm gonna ask jump start this is the state so i'm want to know the remaining time can use the fraction can just use the time whatever you need so jump start here i'm gonna ask if it's less or equal than zero this will mean that the animation finished. Then it would play the jump loop and I do want this animation to loop. So this is fine. And whenever I touch the ground here, so I'm not longer falling, not Boolean falling. So if I'm not falling, then I will play this jump end. I do not want this to loop. And the transition to the next state will be when this animation ends. So I'm going to do exactly the same as the other transition rule. So get an in time remaining if it's less equal than zero, then it will enter the next transition. And I will put it, put it like this. The difference between this and the time remaining and the fraction remaining is that the fraction will give you a value between 0 and 1 and this one will be between 0 and whatever the length of the animation is. So now let's compile, save it, press play and I can move around. If I jump, my animation will work. Great. Now, keep in mind, I have skipped some explanations. For example, what is a blend space? What is a state machine? We go in detail with these topics in our animation blueprint tutorial. It's a little bit updated because Unreal Engine 5 released, but the fundamentals are still there. Now, with that out of the way, with the animations out of the way, let's just close everything related to that. And let's save my main character. And also let's save this map. File, save, current level. Let me add my 3D platformer. And if you are losing track of your folder, you can right click it. Well, we can change the color. We will see it after we save this. So let's create a folder called maps. 
and here I'm gonna put character test map. Let's just save it. And like I was saying, I lose track of my main folder constantly. So let's just set the color. I will set it to a blue. Let's put it OK. And now we can find it easily. Maybe blue doesn't pop up that much. We can change it to any color you would like. And with all of this out of the way, we can start creating mechanics suitable to the platformer genre. For example, pickups. It will be very probable that you will play around collecting stuff, maybe coins, keys, whatever we need in order for my, my game to have some sense of progression, right? So I'm going to create a pickup now. Let's create first a folder inside the core because if our game doesn't have pickups, then I will probably won't be able to win. Okay, so let's just click a folder here and call it pickup. Open it, create a blueprint class. Let's just create an actor, call it blueprint, pick up, double click it, create a static mesh, and it will be blank. So select the component, search for this. There should be a coin or something that we can pick up here of all the assets, collectible. Yeah, let's use this one for now. So we have this collectible. And now, if we can bring it to the map, it can be like this. Let's press play. And nothing is happening, right? So what we need to do is some interaction. We want to collide with this pickup. So let's click on the root component, add a sphere collision. And let's call it pickup collision. And I'm gonna maybe 60. Would that be too much? Nah, it should be fine. I'm gonna set it to only collide with my character. And this will be here in the collision category, collision presets, overlap only pawn. A character is a type of pawn, so this will work for us. Overlap only pawn. And whenever it is overlapped, here if I go to the events category at the, at the end, we have an event called on component begin overlap. Let's click it. And for now, let's just compile, save it. And if something overlaps it, especially, well, if a pawn overlaps it, we will just destroy this pickup. Compile, save, let's press play. And if I overlap it, then it gets destroyed and it looks like I pick it up, right? So that pickup is working fine for now. With the pickup created, we can start duplicating this one by holding Alt, and dragging the blueprint and if we hold alt and shift we can also move the camera so we can have a lot of pickups around the map and i'm not liking these hard shadows so let's add in it was it light skylight and drag it here so we can smooth those shadows and i'm gonna add it to my group of of lighting actors let's just copy that 
paste it here at 100 and add it to the folder that already exists lightning okay that's better that's a lot better actually and we were talking about at the start to that is important to have the flow of the game as fast as we can so having this in mind right now we just have the movement the camera the controls and we have something to do which is pick up this stuff if we wanted to have an ending to the game we would probably need a goal so in order for us to have this goal we need probably to reach somewhere and whenever we reach that place then the game will end like or well the level will be beaten so let's create that goal now let me search for a good mesh for the goal could be a kind of door this one this should should be good yeah yeah that that seems really nice actually so let's use this door this door this wall yep let's use this so let's create the gold blueprint in the core folder and let me remove that filter because also if the goal doesn't exist then what's the point of the game right so new folder goal blueprint class actor because i just want the blueprint to put inside the map and here i will call it blueprint goal I need some something to represent it so let's add an static mesh component find that door wall door or just door door does this works nope that's not it door kit wall this one and I'm gonna put it in the middle some place like that X positive is the forward so let's control C arm rotate it first and then move it to almost the middle that's fine we also need a way to interact with it so we will also create a box collision it will be pretty similar to the pickup so this one will be an i don't want the box to be attached to this static mesh so i'm gonna drag and drop it on top so i can detach it this box i'm gonna reset its values and now i'm gonna increase the extent maybe 100 here should be 200 almost yeah that's fine and 200 and i'm gonna elevate this component like this so whenever i touch this i win now i also need to change the collisions i don't want to overlap all dynamic objects i only need the pawn pawn and here begin overlap for now i'm just gonna show a message print string saying that you want let's save it compile it and i'm gonna put that goal in my level and now i can do some stuff here pick up some stuff and then go to the goal and it will say that i won i need this to be in a place where it is difficult to reach but that will be whenever we create the map for the game with the goal and the pickups we have already a simple game flow to make it a little more official we can go to the game game mode framework game mode we can open full blueprint editor here 
custom event to create something that will trigger whenever we tell it to and we're gonna call it win the game or pass the level just win the game now with this I'm just gonna copy and paste whatever we have here I just cut it paste it here you won and the goal the only thing that it needs to do it's get the game mode and ask if it is using my GM my 3d platformer game mode and tell it that yeah win the game this will allow us that if for whatever reason we don't want to win by the goal anymore we just need to delete this and if whatever it happens after I win we can change it in a game mode and any object that tells the game that we already win will execute whatever code we have here so it's a more clean way to manage our game flow and why did we want to have a game flow so fast because now we can see if, if the game is working we can start tweaking the values maybe uh, these jump values are too weird or the animations not working or maybe it's too simple the game just you just walk here but these are decisions that can be made now we can start testing any mechanic that we had in paper and just adding it to a working game will give you a better perspective so for example right now my game is very boring because it's just a plain surface so we would need to add some difficulties some obstacles for example here we could have Oh, static mesh, I already have it here. Floating island, maybe S. Which one is smaller? Uh, they are the same size. So let's just use this one. Let's put it a little bit more small. And I'm going to put it like this. And another one here. And I'm going to rotate it so it doesn't look like it's the same. And I'm going to put the gold there. And I don't need a copy of it. I just want to move it with shift so my camera also moves. And I'm going to press end so it snaps to my Floor. now if I test the game I can pick up the coins and we really need to do some overhauling some overhaul there so it it works better and now I can see that I won also I can change something that is really bugging me is those animations I don't really like them that much so gonna go to player no excuse me characters epic character animation blueprint jump start will be the running one jump run start I'm not gonna delete this for now in, in in case I change opinion jump loop will we the jump run loop and the jump end will be the run, no, not the run start, the run end. Let's save it, compile it, play it. Oh, and this is, oh, this is not working properly because the end is looping. And also I should remove the jump start loop. So now it's a lot better. I like this a lot more.
Yeah, perfect. Now, now it's it's better. With that animation polished, let's save it. Here, we should do something about these pickups. Why? Because there probably will be more than one type of pickup. Pickups is one of the most common elements in any platformer game. So probably we will have coins, keys, power-ups, etc. So in order to create another pickup, we could just copy and paste this code. But whenever we need to make a change, then it will be really difficult to keep track on which pickups have the change or fix in the code and it will be a mess if you have more than one or two so we can use a concept of programming which it's called inheritance this will mean that for example my blueprint pickup i can right click it and create a child blueprint and this child will inherit all the traits of the parent this one I can call it blueprint coin and this blueprint coin let's just drag and drop it here play it and it will work exactly as the parent if I needed another type of pickup for example pickup another child blueprint key I can move it here but this doesn't look like a key right we can make this change if we right click it edit it or here double click it and in the static mesh change the static mesh I will change it there. There should be a key here. Key. Here it is. Key. And this key is a little bit weird. It's not in the center. But we can change this pickup collision. Like this. So it is a lot more centered. And now compile it character test map I have my key here and it will still be working exactly as the parent which is a bonus because now we just need to change the way the parent works and everything else changes in the case of the coin because I don't want to change the C value every time I want to to put a coin in the map I don't want to do this every time. I'm gonna go inside the coin. The static mesh, I'll put it in... How much did I... Here in the key? Did I move this pickup collection? 140. Let's just copy it. Coin, also 140. And the collision, also 140. Compile it. And now every time I drag and drop a pickup, a coin, excuse me, it will have that height, which is better than just putting them and moving them in the C value. So I'm gonna delete first every other pickup because these are using the base pickup, and you probably don't want to have the base pickup, the parent pickup, anywhere, just the child's. And I will move these childs to another folder outside of the core. The core is the base classes. So here in the my 3D platformer, I'm gonna add a new folder called pickups. And whatever I had in my pickup folder, I'm gonna move it, the key and the coin, to the other folder called pickups. And after moving them, here in the base pickup, the parent, I'm going to double click it, 
and in the event graph I'm gonna create a custom event and I'm calling it picked this up for now we're not gonna do anything with it just call it here whenever I overlap it and I'm gonna do something like this picked pick this up and then gonna destroy the actor so this will be called whatever we put here will be played before we destroy the actor now that we have this set up we can go to the coin or to the key and add new functionality for this i don't really need the goal anymore so i'm gonna close it and the game mode also I'm gonna close it just to avoid having some clutter here and in the coin i'm gonna go to event graph i'm gonna go here in my blueprint panel functions and i'm gonna select pick this up this will be an override of the functionality that you can find here and in the coin maybe i want to put a string in the in the viewport saying you got a coin or one coin So now let's press play and if I pick up the coin I get one coin and if I pick up the key it doesn't have that functionality. I probably also want to play a sound whenever I pick up this coin so I'm gonna use play sound to D because I always want to hear the sound and there should be a coin sound somewhere here it is coin let's press play here is the coin and the key doesn't have any sound now if i wanted to do the same thing with the key i could just copy and paste this but probably in every pickup blueprint i will want to have a sound play so what i can do is put this node or any type of code that I want to use in every pickup child and I'll just cut it and I will paste it in my blueprint pickup here now if I do it like this if I press play my key will sound but my coin won't why is this happening because in my coin I have not tell it to execute the parent code so I'm going to do that by first making some space here in the event pick this up right click it and add call to the parent function this will will make it so whenever and I can double click this whenever this is played first we will run this part of the code and then I will run the string let's press play it sounds here and it also sounds here now I want to change that type of sound so here in the pickup I'm going to make the sound a variable and a variable is just a little box where we can store some information we need to define the type of variable if we just right click it and promote to the variable this is already defined it's just a sound base let's compile it and for now I will clear this value because this is the base class the parent pickup and in the coin I will go to the class defaults and here in sound I will change it to coin save it and compile it and in the key I also going to go to the close defaults and in sound there should be also a key type of sound here key 
let's save and compile let's press play and now if i pick up the key it's a different sound than the coin now let's add some specific functionality for my coin pickup i do want to show the, how many coins i have and i will do it in my main character i won't be able to create uh, a widget i could do it but it will take me a little bit more time so what i'm gonna do is here just add a text render and i'm gonna put it on top of my character this text render i'm gonna add it to my spring arm and i'm going to reset the positions and i'm gonna put this right on top of the character i want to see if this will show the text even if i rotate my camera and it does so it's working good enough i'm gonna put it like this and i'm gonna rotate it a little bit first let me change the or horizontal alignment center text text button is is fine and now i'm gonna rotate it 180 text it may be a little bit too high something like this and now it is working perfect i want it to be zero for now And this text will reflect the number of coins that I have. So I need to store somewhere the number of coins. I'm going to save it in the main character, which means that if my main character for some reason gets destroyed, I will lose all the coins. If I did not want this kind of functionality, I could probably put it in another class, maybe in the player controller, but that is for now out of the scope of this tutorial so let's create a variable for this number of coins and let's set up its type i don't want to store half a coin so i don't need a floating point number i just need an a whole number an integer and compile it save it number of comments zero i will have a function here to add a coin and th what this will do is it will set my number of coins to the current number of coins plus one plus zero plus one and you see that I just drag and drop this variable if you just drag and drop it normally, you get this message. If you drag and drop while holding control, you get the get. And if you drag and drop it with the alt, you get a set. Now with this, my number of coins will be updated, but I also need to update this text. So I'm just going to drag and drop it. I'm going to set text. Here it is, set text. And the text I'm going to set is this one. And I can define the minimum integral digits. Maybe I could put two here. So I could press play. And for now, let me put the text in zero, zero. And whenever I add a coin and I can choose to test it like this add coin in the begin play so after i press play i will add a coin then it will have zero one so it's pretty cool let's compile save it and now we need that whenever we pick up a coin we want to call 
this add a coin. We will do the we will do it a simple way. If we have some time, I can show you how to do it another way. But for now, it is easier if some blueprint communicates to another one. This is called blueprint communications. There are three types of the most common blueprint communications. This, what we will do is a direct communication. And for any type of communication, we need the sender, the receiver, and the message. So here, the coin will send the mes message of, uh, you need to add one coin. And the receiver will be the main character. So in order for the coin to send the mes message, it needs a reference to the receiver. To get the reference of the receiver, we can go to the blueprint pickup parent. And here in the picked colli pickup collision, the begin overlap, we has we have this other actor. And this is the other actor that it's colliding with this blueprint. Overlap component is the component inside this blueprint that has caused this collision, in this case, the pickup collision. The other actor is the other actor that caused the collision, in this case, the main character. Other component is the component inside the other actor. In this case, it should be the capsule component. And well, the other ones are for more um, special types of collision. We can get the results of of the specific, the impact location, normal, impact normal, etc. But this is out of the scope. So I need to send this other actor to my picked this app event. So let's click here. Let's add an input. And this will be of the actor type. Actor, object reference. And I will put it actor that picked this and for now should be fine I need to connect these two and in my coin I also need to connect these two and with this actor I can do something like this I can ask if it's my main character cast the main character and if it is then I will just add a coin. With this, if I press play, I add a coin and it is added. And let's add more coins here. And see if it is working. And it is. So that's awesome. With the coins working, we can now pay attention to the key that right now is not doing anything. What I want to do is have some gates that will be opened only by some specific keys. And it will depend on the type of key that it is. So we will open this blueprint. I will use Control E. And here I need to save a value of the type of key it is. For example, it is a blue key, red key, whatever key it is. So what I'm going to do is add a variable. I'm going to call it key type. And here I'm going to select as a variable type gameplay tag. And this could be a new concept for a lot of people. So what is a tag? A tag is some text that I can set up in my project settings. Let's go to a project settings. Here, gameplay tags. And it's a easy way to compare strings or well, categories, whatever you need, you can put here. So for example, if I want to ask if my player has the blue key and the red key it will be easier to use gameplay tags 
than having to create, for example, a string here and then comparing strings. So in my case, I'm going to go here to a project setting, gameplay tags, add a new gameplay tag, and I will put here key. Yes, add the tag. Here I will have all my tags. I can add a sub tag here, key dot blue, add the new tag, and also red for now. That way, whenever we have the blue the blue key, it will open all the blue gates, and if, whenever we have the red key, it will open all the red gates. And maybe if we have a purple gate, we need the blue and the red key, something like that, maybe. Now, with this setup, I can go to my... No, not to my coin. I can close my coin for now. I can go to my key, compile and save it, and in my key type, in the details panel, we can change the default type. Right now, it's a blue type of key. So I can put here blue by default. So compile, save it. And whenever I want to pick this up, let's remember functions override pick this up. If we want to play it, this sound, we also need to call to the parent function. And now here, I should give the key to the actor that has picked this. So I'm going to main character. Like we add a coin, we can get a key. And the input will be a gameplay tag. And we want to save it in a collection of gameplay tags that we can get. So here, is, this will be the key to obtain. And to save it, we need to create a variable, like exactly like the coins. But this one is is collected, and this can't be a, just a gameplay tag because if it was a gameplay tag, we can only have one value, either blue or either red. So I need to change this to a gameplay tag container. This will be a collection of any type of gameplay tags. Okay, so compile and save it. And here, keys collected. Let's get the collection. We can gameplay tags, add gameplay tag, and connect it like this. This will make it so we are getting the key and saving it in my character. Again, if this character is destroyed, then we lose all the keys. So maybe this isn't the best place to save the keys. But for now, we will do it like this. Now, blueprint key is actor. I need to know if it's the main character. And here, we will get a key. which is the key that we want to give the character is this one, key type, this one. Save it. And now let's just go to a main character to check if this is working. Let's print the keys that we have collected. It was debug, get debug string from gameplay tag container. Let's press play. Let's go to the key and it says key blue. Now, if I wanted to add more keys, then we can change these values and add more keys here in the project settings. Now we need something to use the key on. 
and we will create some gates that will depend on the type of key. So let's go to the content drawer. In the core folder, let's create a new folder called gate. Let's open it. Let's just put a blueprint class there. An actor is fine. Blueprint gate. Let's open it. I need first the static mesh for the gate. There should be something that I can use here. If I type gate, large gate, I need just a gate. Or here, gate. And add static mesh. And it's fine if it's attached like this. This will be force field because I just saw the force field static mesh that I wanted to use. Force field, here it is. And now I have this force field. And it's a blue type of force field, so if I use the key, the blue key, I should be able to disable this. So I'm gonna put this key, this key, this gate on my on my map, and let's make sure that the gate is pointing the right way. Remember, X positive is forward, so I'll select the gate static mesh. Let's call it static mesh gate. And I'm gonna rotate it a little bit. So now it is facing forward. Now, yeah, perfect. I need some way of interacting with this because right now it's just blocking my path, which is good. So the way I will have to interact with this we already have seen it. Let's click on the default scene root, add a box collision, box collision. I'm going to call it gate interaction zone. This will be a trigger. It's It will be al almost the same as the overlap pawn. It will have some presets here, a little bit changed. Let's not worry about that. Trigger will work. So gate interaction zone, collision preset trigger. Let's just make it a little bit bigger. 100, no, that's maybe too much. Or maybe it's enough. This 200 also, no, that's too little. 300 and 200 here. And now in the C value, I'm going to put 100. That was too little. So let's just put it up a little bit. Perfect. Now I have my interaction box. And what I'm going to do with it is, again, use the on component begin overlap. Here I will check if first Whatever I touched is the main character, so the other actor. Let's make sure that it, it is the main character. And then I want to ask what type of keys does it have. So I'm going to ask here, get it. keys collect. And I want to compare with the type of gate that it is. This one is by default is a blue gate and I want to see if you have the correct key so what I'm gonna do is create a variable that will let me save what type of gate it is so variable let's put um, gate type And here, gameplay, it won't be attack, it won't be a container, it will be a query, because we will see in this collection if you have the type of key that I'm setting up here in this query. So 
let's compile and save it. Gate type, gonna put edit, and I'm gonna here select any tags match. And what tags do I need to match is the type of key. In this case, blue for now. So let's save and close it. And now I can compare if this gate type get gate type gameplay tags. Ah, here it is. Make gameplay tag query. Oh, excuse me. It's not. It was not the make. It was the compare. This one. Does container match tag query? So this is the query. This is the container. And if it matches, let's put a branch node here. If this is true, it means that in the keys collected, I do have the same type that I have in the query, which is blue. And I want to create a custom event just for clarity sake and for cleaning the code. Here, this custom event will be open the gate. And if this is true, I will open the gate. For now, opening the gate will mean that the force field, I will disable the collision. So set collision enabled to no collision. And I will also hide it. Set actor, no, set hidden in game. I'll set it to true. So with this in true, I will press play. Here I cannot pass. If I get the blue key, now I can pass. If we see this again, it is looking a little bit too rough around the edges because it just disappears. And what I can do, especially with this force field, I already checked the material. Here I can double click here in materials and it will open this type of material. And it already has a value called opacity. And if I check click the check and then move it around, I can change the opacity of this element, which is really, really cool. So this is something that we can modify in blueprints. So for now, I won't save this. But in order to modify a material parameter, which is that opacity, that's a parameter, I need to first make it a dynamic material. So I'm going to do exactly the, just that. Begin play. I'm going to create dynamic material instance. And this one already has the static mesh force field selected. It will reflect this name. So I'm just going to use, use it. I need to make sure here in my static mesh that the material index index is zero here element index zero also and the source material will be this one so i'm gonna find it like this and i'm gonna assign it here with this arrow and the only thing i need to do now is save it as a variable and i'm gonna call it force field dynamic material and well, reference. Because we are referring to this created dynamic material instance. Now, when we open the gate, we can set up instead of hidden in game, we can get this dynamic material, set a parameter. In this case, it's a scalar parameter value because it is just one number, it's not a vector, it's a scalar. I will put it to zero and this is opacity. And I, I'm not sure if it is in all caps or not, so let's check it again. Material here, 
this is the name we can right click it and copy display name and then in the gate paste it here let's press play let's see if it works ah, and I, ha I need to have the key it is working but now with this parameter i can create a little animation with my timeline gonna type timeline at timeline this timeline will be force field opacity or it, it could be timeline opening the gate now what is a timeline is an special node that can play a curve so how do we modify the curves let's just double click it the length i want it to be one the track i need a float track we can have vectors events or colors i just need a float track this will be the opacity and here i can define the curve we can right click and add the key or we can shift click and we can also add any key the opacity will start in the time zero with a value of one and it will end in time one with a value of zero we can use these arrows to frame those keys but this is the curve that will be played whenever we use this node so we can close it and here we will find that my timeline has a new pin called opacity whenever we open the gate we want to play that timeline and every time the timeline updates i want to update the opacity value like this so let's play, press play let's get the blue key and now we can see the force field disappear which is pretty pretty nice Now that we have the pickups, the keys, and the gates working, it should be a good idea to know how to create more keys, more pickups, or well, another different type of gate. So for example, we will do this approach. Let's say we don't want to create more keys. We could just, like we did with the pickup, where, where is our key folder or pickups folder here we can just create a child grouping class and change the values or if we open the key we can here key type open the eye of this this means instance editable which means that any instance of this actor of this blueprint that i have in the map for example this is an instance if i duplicate it i have another instance i can make it change so here edit red let's just save it and now if i press play i get the red key i cannot open this blue gate but if i had a blue gate a red gate excuse me i'm gonna duplicate this i cannot change the value because i have not made it instance editable so i'm gonna go to the gate here in the query i'm gonna open its eye this may makes it an instance editable gonna compile it save it and now in the map i can edit this and here no i don't want the key blue i want the key red and i will save it now i can press play i get the red key i can't open the blue one but I can open the red one. If I needed both edit, edit and blue and red, let's see if this is supporting both. Let's press play. If I get a red, it is still working because it now it will open with any of this one, the red key or the blue or the, the blue key, the blue or the red. But we can here in, instead of any tags match, all tags match. And now I can add the blue and the red. Save and close. Press play. If I pick up the red key, won't work. 
But if I pick up also the blue key here, I know red and blue. That one opened with the blue. And this one opened only with both. Now, we have changed the values here. But we have not changed how it will look. So, here, this is, remember, the red key. With any blueprint, I have access to its components here in the details panel. These are the components of this blueprint. And I can go to the static mesh and change this material. So instead of power, power up A, there is already a red material. So let's put power up A3. And that is a red key. I did not have to create another blueprint that will only change the way it looks. For the force field, in this case, let me make it so I only need the red key, like this, safe and close. I can also check the force field, this is the material instance, and I can change the color. So for this one, and um, where is it, here it is, I will browse to it, I will duplicate it, call it force field red, gonna open it and change its color multiplier. So this one could be this red. Like this. Okay. And now I will use this red value here in my map. Force field. There should be a force field red. Here it is. And now it is. it will work as, as expected. But it seems that it didn't save it for some reason. Let's just save this. If this doesn't work, then something in that material must be changing my, my color multiplier. Not to worry, we can also go to the gate, create a here also in the when we create a dynamic material instance, we can use set material instance to change this color multiplier. Let's copy the display name. Let's put here uh, parameter, uh, set parameter. And in this case, the parameter is a vector because it is a color. So set vector parameter. Now I will put the name, color multiplier, and this value, I will make it a variable. This variable will be gate color. Gate force field color. Let's be a little more specific. It's, it's good for your variables to have a very easy name to understand. Understand if we just created variables that ah this is s, and this is x, and this represent the velocity and the location. It just doesn't make any sense later on when you check the code again. So here this color, I'm gonna set it up the same as this blue. So I'm gonna copy the value, and here I'm gonna first compile and save, paste the value. Perfect compile it, and make it instance editable. This way, I can return the this gate material. Didn't work that approach, so let's just reset it to default. But we can, here, instead of selecting the components, we can go to the blueprint itself, and in gate force field color, I'm going to change it to the red one. If it's not changing, it's because this code is in the begin play. So we won't be able to see the change until we press play. But now we do see the change. So maybe you can do a combination of both if you want to also see it. And I'm going to copy this red. Copy. And I'm going to paste it, the blueprint, paste it here. It's almost the same. So we press play, 
we get the blue one, this open, this doesn't open. We get the red key, and this open, and the other does it. Before building the gameplay map, I wanted to polish a little bit the celebration part. Because right now, if I reach the gate, like this, is it just says you won. And it doesn't look really nice. So what I'm gonna do is, first, the main character needs to save a state, a celebration state. So let's create a variable. Let's call it is celebrating. And I could do it like this, but let's just say that there may more, uh, they, my English is failing. They may be more states that you could have or that you would want to have. So a better way to implement this will be here, creating a numerator inside the layer. And here, I'm going to go to the category blueprints enumeration. I'm going to call it E character states. And here, it will be the first value, none, second value, default, and the third value, celebration. Creating a celebration here, and yeah, celebration, blueprint, main character is celebrating. Let's just not call it that. Let's call it character state. And here, let's call it, the type should be E character states. This one. By default, it should be default. Perfect. And now we should have a way of entering that celebration state. So let's go to functions, enter celebration and this will change the state to the celebration and also it will spawn a Niagara system system at location the location I know I have this celebrate so let's test it like this, get actor location and also get actor rotation. Like this. And let's just test it. How should I enter this in this celebration? Well, you should only enter this state if you win. How do we know if we, we if we won in the game state? So let's open game state 3D platformer. You won. We can leave the message. But now I can get the player character. Cast it to my player. main character and here it will enter the celebration let's press play let's just let's just speed run this we don't need to walk all the way here we can just right click here play from here we will enter it and we have that celebration and that should be following me around so let's go here instead of a spawn system at location spawn system attached the template should be celebrate the attached component should be this capsule component and the location tab type should snap to target and keep the world scale let's press play and let's speed run it like this 
play from here and now it is celebrating i need an animation let's go to my well let's save the game mode this is already done let's go to an animation blueprint let's select the skeletal mesh component double click well here anim class search it double click it and now here in my locomotion i can have a state of celebration celebrate and i will only enter if the character state here is and this should also be character state and i don't know how to type here it is if this is equal to celebration it will be true and it should enter this animation let's copy that and if i need to leave this this state otherwise i will get stuck here i can do the opposite if it is not celebrating so is the not boolean not the other one the other one is a comparison so if it is not celebrating then we return to the normal behavior we press play and let's not forget to do this play from here now it is well it is not happening nothing is happening because i didn't add first i didn't add the animation celebrate should be any of these ones i believe let's just put this one and also i have not set up this value so i need to go to the event graph i need to get the character and here i need to do another cast and i can copy and paste this try get pound owner cast to main character and ask the character state and set my character state with that character state like this and let's not forget again play from here and now it is celebrating it is looping and i can move around this shouldn't be possible so we can add a little check here in the event graph Let, let's just close the other functions and in the movement input i can ask if it is celebrating but what i'm gonna do is create a function called can move and here this function will return a value a boolean value return value this will be a pure function and we will see what's the difference in a minute and I will only be able to move if my character state is equal to the default one. This allows me to add more checks if I need later. So can move. I'm gonna use it here. Now the difference with a pure function and a and a normal function is that a normal function will look like this and can modify the values inside the pure one looks like this and will only return some value after calculating something usually a pure, a pure function won't edit any value of the variables inside it you can make it do it but it usually it's not the way so i will copy and paste this can move and now if whoops if we play from here we go here and now i can't move even though i'm pressing w s d great one thing that i noticed while i was testing this is that 
what happens when you fall from here? You would need to respawn somewhere, right? Well, we can create this little respawn system easily. First, we need to have a way of knowing where should we respawn. So, let's go to the gameplay. Well, to the game mode, excuse me. Game mode. And let's save a variable called respawn point. And I'm going to put it as a transform because a transform will have the location, rotation, and scale. Now we need to set up the first respawn point, point and that will be the player start, this one. So here in my game mode, it, at the begin play, I'm going to search for the, for the player start, get actor of class. There should be only one, unless it's a multiplayer game where there are multiple player, player starts, but usually in a single player game, it's only one. So here, get actor from class, player start, gonna get the actor transform. And I'm going to set my respawn point. Now we have this respawn point. We need to know when the character falls. So let's create a blueprint that will help with this. Here in the core, there should be a folder called um, respawn system. And here will be blueprint class, an actor. This will be a height kill volume. And there is already a, a volume like that. It's called kill C volume. That we can put here and then if this is big enough, it will destroy our actor, but we really don't want to destroy the actor. We just want to respawn it. So check. you can check how it works. It just destroyed the character. We don't want that. We don't want to complicate ourselves too much with it. We just want to respawn the character or just teleport it here. So that's why we're creating our own blueprint height kill volume. But let's just call it height respawn and let's open it we only need a box collision and here we just need to overlap only the pawns excuse me overlap only pawn and begin overlap when we touch this box what we are gonna do is just teleport it the character, the actor. We can check if it's the main character or not. For now, I'm just not going to bother with it. We can just teleport it. Where do we want to teleport it? To where the game mode tells me. So, here we will cast it. And now we can get the respawn point. Get respawn point. We can split it and we have the location and the rotation that we need. Let's compile, save it, play it. Ah, and we haven't added this to our map, so it won't work. Hide respawn volume. Gonna put this one here. And if you want a better way to increase these values, we can go to the top. And now we can make it a lot bigger by scaling it or by changing its values. For now. And by changing the values, I mean here going to the components. In this box component, we can add this box then maybe to 100. But 
I, I will leave it like this. I, I, I just want to scale it up or down. Something like this to cover everything. Remember that our character can be here and jump that way. Now, let's go back to our perspective. Let's press play. And whenever we touch that, we respawn wherever our respawn point was. Now, we can have multiple respawn points that we can add and we ju would just need to change this value. This is what we usually call a checkpoint. So let's create one. We don't really need this height respawn volume anymore. We don't really need this animation blueprint also. The main character probably we do. So let's create a checkpoint. Here, respawn system. Checkpoint is also a part of the respawn system. So let's add the blueprint class here. Actor, blueprint, checkpoint. And we need a static mesh as always. And we need to find, I don't know if there was a checkpoint here, no. Let me remember which assets do I have at hand. This could be it, button ring and the button. And I, if I press the button, there is a checkpoint. Yeah, that seems cool enough. We have the ring here. We can select the button. And this makes it a lot easier. And here we select, check the, press on the add button. And here you can check that static mesh has in parentheses, the static mesh that we have selected in the content drawer. So we have the button there. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So now we can do something with it, for example, in the defaults in root, let's add a box collision. And with this box collision, let's just modify some of its values. 100. And here maybe 50 and 50. Could also be a capsule. Doesn't matter. But with this... This will also be a trigger. Let's go to collisions, trigger, and begin overlap. Whenever my character overlap this, I want to update the respawn point in my game mode. We could just get game mode, cast it to my game mode, my 3D platformer, and from here, we can set the respawn point, but it is a lot cleaner to have a function here in case we need to do something else after reassigning the respawn, the respawn point. So I'm going to call it update respawn point. And here, we just set it like this. And as an input, I need a transform. Now, in the checkpoint, we can just call update the respawn point. We need a respawn point, a transformation. And because I don't want to make some calculations to know what is this point, because this static mesh has a zero, zero, but it won't. I can't spawn my character in the zero zero because otherwise my character will be like this, stuck in the floor. So to in order to avoid that, we can have a little arrow component and this arrow component will be on the root. Do not make it the new root, just attach it and reset anything that it has here. And it will be like this, something like this, maybe. That should be working. 
compile it, save it, and in the event graph, I will need the arrow. Let's get the world transform. Otherwise, this component will give me the relative transform. And the relative transform right now is 0, 0, 110. But the world transform will depend on where do I put that checkpoint. So let's use that checkpoint. Checkpoint, I can find it, find it, excuse me, browse to it. Here it is. Let's save and compile it. And now we can go to our character test map. And if I fall through here, I respawn there. If I go here and then respawn here, I respawn in my bot. I should be able to make this button color change. So what we can do will be to change the, mater the material here. There should be a lot of bottom materials. Bottom one, here we have blue and green. So here, maybe after I update my respawn point, I can button set material and I can assign it the red one and well let's use the green one press play and now we can know that that respawn is activated now you will find it that Let's say we duplicate this. I activate this checkpoint. I fall down. It works. I activate this one. I fall down. It works. But the other one stays active. We can... Um, we can fix that if in my game mode, in the update respawn point, I also am sending the checkpoint reference and this will be a checkpoint and in this checkpoint reference I will save it promote to variable call it it was checkpoint reference is fine but I'm gonna call it current checkpoint reference I'm gonna set it like this. But before setting the reference, I want to make it go back to the way it was before. So here, I need to tell it to go back to the way it was before. In the checkpoint, I will create a custom event. Return to normal. And what this will do is just set the material to the other one, which was button A, like this. And here in checkpoint ref, I should send this blueprint, well, self, can't do it. Okay, let's call it self here, self, get the reference to self and connect it to the checkpoint reference. If it doesn't let let me is because I have yet to compile it. Now it should let me. Self object reference is not compatible with checkpoint ob object reference. Why not, dude? Let's just refresh this node. Refresh it. It's still not com compatible. What? Let's just create this update respawn. Respawn point and what is this? And self is not it. But this is a checkpoint. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe it was because this value, we had two checkpoints. Yeah, for some reason there was two checkpoints. I'm gonna select the second one and I'm gonna compile. It's gonna throw me an arrow here and I'm just gonna ignore it for now. Is if this is what 
now it's correct yeah for some reason i don't know why it created two checkpoints so it, it could happen now i'm sending the checkpoint reference i have a way to return to normal so in my game mode here this checkpoint reference let me delete the last one i'm gonna promote it to a variable call it current checkpoint reference and before before i set all of this up i'm gonna use a sequence here sequence is a node that can let you organize your stuff pretty easily and if you don't like cables you can also get checkpoint ref this is the same as getting it through here get respawn point this is a, a, a good knowledge to have and i'm gonna call this new respawn point so it's easier to to know which which one i'm getting get new respawn point now i know the difference between these two perfect and before i do this i'm gonna check if my current checkpoint is valid and if it is valid you can do it like this or you can do it with the macro like this but if it is valid i'm gonna return it to normal and with this code we can save compile it press play seems i have an error here what's the error A spawn location it changed compile it let's checkpoint i have two checkpoints what oh there, there exists another checkpoint <laughs> the one that comes with the hour of code we could just ignore it just just ignore it ignore the the error message i, I should even delete it yeah I, i'll delete it so you you see it's it really it's not important and it's being referenced by this replace the reference force it did. okay let's press play let's go to my first checkpoint it works last checkpoint the other one returns to normal and it is still working now that we have all the built-in blocks let's create a map that can use them so i will create a new map new level empty open world create and well i'll save it save current level and this will be the level one i will use the modeling tools to create a prototype very very fast and where's x positive here it is let's say we start right here on a big platform and this is just pulling and pushing push pull i'm just using q and e to make it faster and then it will be a quick jump here yeah like this i don't want it to be too hard so let's put the corner mode select these two corners and q and e to make them a little bit take them a little bit down now press done let's continue something like this maybe now you need to jump here now i don't really know if you can make those jumps so it's a good thing to test it so put complete we need a um, where is my player start put it here we can play now but it will be 
everything in black so let's add those lights so what we need is a directional light to get better shadows the skylight what did we add also visual effects sky atmosphere what else our clouds there they go and the exponential height a lot better now let's try it let's test it this should be an easy jump very easy jump this one also i missed that but is it possible to make it from there should be but i want to make it through an easy jump uh just a tap jump and doesn't seem to be possible so let's change it a little bit because these are the first jumps come on should be easy Sli Oop, nope slide forward corner mode and let's see if that that makes it a lot more easier a lot more easy perfect now what we need to do is introduce the first double jump double jump and the hold jump i mean we need to make it so the player learns that you can hold the jump and that it that will be something that will be needed so first this should be an easier kind of jump that you just press once and you just get on top of it of on top of it let's go back to the cube grid, grid in our modeling mode and then let me just select this part two three and now you shouldn't get any type of option otherwise our player will feel lost so the player will try to jump and sooner or later it will have to hold the spacebar it will start making sense like doesn't this should be supposed to to be easy but easily jump over but the player won't be able to do it until it learns well until they they learn to hold the jump and there are not a lot of other places to go so it's like a mandatory learning without telling them that they will learn this i'm not really a big fan of games where you need to put a lot of cues or signs telling them what to do but for me this should be fine now i need some kind of platform here and here this zone will be like the end game why because i will put the gate where's my gate here's my gate here and I will require the player to have let's edit this gate type gate type to all tags match and we need the blue and the red safe and close and for the color I will choose a purple what kind of purple it will be not really sure we, will, we well I can tweak it later but whenever I press play this should be purple it's not a red, it's not a blue. Purple fuchsia, I re I'm not really good with colors, but here you should be able to see the, the goal. So then we can have some backtracking to get to it. So here I will put another kind of room and the goal just like that 
Now we need to do some more platforming. So we should be able to pick up any key and start going through platforms and gates and pick up some coins so the game feels a lot more fun and i mean this is a really straightforward map so what i will do is just prototype a little bit and i will speed it up because i already told you what will my thought process will be i will speed up this part so you don't get bored with me playing around with some level design. Here I'm just trying to block out the level, trying to get the distances right, trying to make it a little bit interesting. I will make two branching paths, one to get the blue key, the other to get the red key. I believe that I put the gate in purple, so I need both of them. But that would mean I would need a red gate somewhere. So it makes sense like, oh, you get the red key and the blue key and it gets combined. So I didn't want to add another path to, to the level. So I just put the, uh, the gate back to red. So first I need to go through the left side to get the blue key and then in the right side, I get the red key that will lead me to the go. And as you have seen, I'm mostly testing the scale, the distances, trying to make some interesting shapes. And it's good to know that everything that I do here, later on, I don't really need to follow it like very strictly is just to get a, an idea of how the map will look how the map will be managing its distances and well here i'm playing around with the corner corner tool to make some ramps and i will Notice that if I try to go up that ramp, the angle is too steep, so I need to later change that. And again, even if it later doesn't fit, it doesn't matter because whenever I start decorating the map with props, then it will be easier for me to know the true scale, but at least with this part of the process, I know how large the map will be. I can get a sense of the mechanics that I'm trying to teach or that I'm, that I'm trying to use. In this case, this last part is all about jumps that are long or that you can easily miss. And the other part, the first one was precision jumps that you really don't need to hold your space key, but you need to be a little more careful with how you're jumping. If you jump too much, you fall down. If you jump too little, you also fall down. And here, well, I changed the key to a red key. And the gate falls. So it, it is it, it is easier for me to finish this level. I finished the blockout, but one thing that I should really mention is that whenever you open the level, I closed the project recently. Let's just open the level one. You've need to have this window and word partition word partition editor otherwise you will see everything blank and then here you will select these cells and right click it and load the selected cells this way you will have all your map and well if you create a much bigger map then you can choose to just load some part of our map so here, I already tested it, it's working pretty fine, and I just wanted to add some gameplay elements. For example, that part is, is easy enough, but still, if I die here, and I have not put my 
my height respawner so it would be a really good idea to do it or score respawn system height and i'm gonna put this here gonna go to the top perspective and just make it fit with the level And be sure to overextend this, just in case something sends our character flying and you really need to have this collision. And it would be a good idea to increase the C value a little, a little bit, just in case the velocity is too high and you end up skipping that, the trigger. It shouldn't happen, but you really don't know whenever someone else is is playing your game. So here, now I can press play. If I fall down, I'll start here. Usually, this part should be an introductory part where uh, you can fall, and here you should enter some some place. So if you die here, for example, in this jump, I really don't want it to go back to the start. So I will put a little checkpoint here. And it should be really, really visible, so the player doesn't skip it. So you will see this immediately. Oh, what's this? Seems to be light up. And whenever the character falls, then you should be able to respawn here. Now, this part also should be very easy. Except this one could be a little rage inducing yeah it's it's really tricky actually so i'm gonna also put a checkpoint here here you sh if you fall through this gap uh, it's fine you you can go here and maybe because this will be a second part where i only can access after i get this blue key and i go back through this path and then and then go through the gate and here probably we already took this this checkpoint and it's really not that di difficult and it should add a little bit of tension if you fall here and go back here then it's like oh i really need to get my jumps on point so i believe it is fine like this the pickups well the coins i will add after the set dressing of this map i will add some props and make it look a little bit better for but because right now everything is gray so let's start with that this part will also be sped up because what i'm gonna do now is just replace most of the geometry, if not all, by the assets that we're going to use, that we have imported from the other project. Here you see me scaling stuff up and down. It, it will be probably better if I get rid of the snapping in the rotation and in the scale. So I get a more natural scale, scale. So that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. And regarding the scale, usually it won't pixelate too much or it won't be that noticeable if you use a 1.75 scale. So maybe with 2x scale, it can be noticeable but it really depends on the assets depends on how realistic it look, looks the texture in this case it's a very cartoony type of feel so it's a little bit harder to notice also here i'm adding some rotation so those surfaces 
are not looking to play. Because uh, a simple surface that constantly repeats itself and it's in the it's parallel to the to the ground sooner or later it will get boring and I'm not gonna worry that much right now by leaving those blank space because later on I will probably do another pass with more props to hide anything that will look kind of weird or not believable Also, in some part of this video, I will select the the geometry here in that that we created with the modeling tools, and remove the collisions, and also make it hidden. Put it in a folder so I can hide it and find it really easily, and also set the value of set actor here in game to true that way i can press play and i won't be able to see it and i won't need to just delete that geometry because maybe later i could i can review what what i need from that geometry and in this part it happens i'm, I'm showing something that happens very frequent you're putting the props and they don't exactly align with the with the scale that you have proposed for your game or with the height in in my case those stairs were too high and it made me have to elevate everything by a little bit here i'm just testing that the jumps are still do doable and after that after positioning in the quote-unquote correct place I can now move it around and position it to the new height that way I know that those jumps are still doable and I'm still keeping the distance that I planned before so yeah here I also need to add some collisions to some props and this will be very noticeable when you start playtesting you will see that i'm putting assets in this case this stair had an angle that it was too steep so i just went inside the character to fix that you can find that value in the character movement component and it should be we should be something like angle to walk on and i just bump it up to 70 i believe so playtesting, like I was saying, very important, will let me see this kind of errors before I just think I'm done with the with the map. Because if you don't catch these error, errors, then you will show it to someone else, they will get stuck and you will feel defeated. I mean, it, it's still a, a learning experience to have someone playtest your level but you want to catch most of the errors with yourself play testing it so that's why it's important and you don't really need to play test from the start here in well in most of the times i'm play testing i'm just right clicking in the map and clicking in play from here so i don't need to go to the start of the level and to reach that part that the specific part that I'm testing. Right now, I determined that it was too easy, maybe, and I started moving around the the platforms. And here, these jumps they, they were especially somewhat annoying, not too not that much. So it, it was something that I wanted to maintain. So I'm using those cubes to try to get the same scale, the same distance that this part offered. You will see that right now I'm following the geometry exactly, well, almost exactly as it is. But I will take some liberty, some freedoms in the positions and rotations later on. 
or I do believe that is at the end of this sped up video that I'll start rotating some stuff. But this first pass of assets, let me know that this is still working as well as my prototype, as my blockout. And here I'm rotating it. And even though, though I have been changing it by other assets, at least the floors, the platforms are still working. After having the floors changed by the meshes that that we're gonna use, then we can do a second pass of props where we can add all the stuff that will make it look a lot better. In this case, some foliage won't do us any harm and we can tweak a little bit if it is not working. For example, if the plant is under empty space, then we can move it or we can delete it. Then we are using some props, also from the from the marketplace, from that free asset, to make a little a little foundation for our I don't know how to call it, maybe house or whatever it is where the goal is right and we're just trying to make everything first look similar and then start adding some details for example that wall with with the window and using the same assets that that i use for the platforms we can just rotate them scale them and position them in a way so they look like rocks so it's really not necessary to create that much assets with and i would have preferred if it was a complete rock so that would have made my job a lot easier but just by rotating it and putting it together with other other platforms, I can make it seem like it's a bigger construction than what really is. So by using the parts, now I'm trying to make the goal location a little bit more noticeable. I mean, if something has a gold, a gold border, then it should be really important, right? And I'm adding a roof just in case you can jump from another platform to that to that area so that way i'm making sure that this area can be only accessible if i get the red key also i'm playing a little bit with the lighting and that lighting inside that room should reflect that it should is an important room or something like that. Also, I'm adding some some meshes in the bottom of floating platforms just to make it look a little bit more believable. It's not just a floating, floating floor. The next part is trying to make sense of the other gate. And later on, I will run into a problem where I can cheat and skip that gate but it all comes down to playtesting you will still see even though this this video is sped up like 800 percent so hopefully it is noticeable but it is it took me a long time i mean i'm not really an environment artist or a level designer i i know some principles of level design what to take in consideration but because it's not something that, that I do often, it is taking me a little bit of time. It took me like an hour and, and two minutes, but it was really fun. So I really didn't no notice the time passing. Here I'm trying to create some crystal structures using only one prop and rotating them, grouping them, and then 
duplicating them. And later on, I will try to add more, more of that, those crystal designs to more parts of the map. Here again, I'm trying to get rid of just floating platforms. Floating boxes, uh, that's okay, I believe. But just uh, almost a plane. Sh didn't look, really look that good to me. Here I'm trying to avoid the player skipping the gate because you could you could jump through that hole and you really didn't need the blue key also you could jump to the side and that was also an issue so I tried to to fix it by just blocking that that part and some some parts that just really a, a little bit of touching and care So here we have the map, it's looking a lot better, I mean I did my my best, <laughs> so yeah it was pretty fun, took a, a long time, but at least we have the map. There are a little details right that we can add or, or well that I should add, for example here I noticed that I had some, where is my static mesh, some clouds, and these clouds are very big, so I can put them in the base, something like this, and also the cloud B should help me a lot. And this cloud, if I scale it maybe by 10, will allow me to kind of give the idea that I'm really up, up there in the sky. So this one, I'll scale it by 8. And again, put it someplace like this and I'm gonna get re rid of my snapping tool I'm going to move them around a little bit something like that maybe a little bit lower or to the side And I can even rotate rotate it to make it look like it's completely another asset. This one is looking very similar, so I'm gonna rotate it also. Maybe to the side. And then put, put it someplace like this. Move this one around. And let's press play and see how, how it's looking. Um, it's a little bit better. I should also use these clouds. And put it in, this, in the sky. Like so. Maybe one of these ones here also. Where's the other? The cloud D. And this one shouldn't cast shadows, otherwise it will look a little bit weird. So I'm gonna select them, go to lighting, cast shadow, don't let them cast shadows.
And again, I'm just winging it. I don't really usually do environment art or nothing of the sort, but you see that the tools give me a lot of a lot of room to a room to play with it them. Yeah. And the harder I try to talk while doing something, the harder it gets. Let's press play. We have some clouds there. I mean, it's supposed to, to be a little bit cartoonish. But this is maybe too close. And I also had some effects. There was a wind system, which is a, a blueprint that I can modify the curve, for example, like this, and create another node. And it will give like a wind moving around. There it is. And these type of blueprints are very useful because it can help guide whoops, the, the way. And this is not what I wanted to do, so I'll again search for the wind system. Here, for example, let's put this like that. And I'm going to move it a little bit. And then see what's happening with that. So it takes a little bit to appear, but there it is. And I really should extend that cloud, that, that sea of clouds. Oh, and I get some nice reflections out of this. Pretty cool. Also, Another thing that can help us a lot, for example, let's just select all these clouds and maybe group them with Ctrl G, duplicate them, rotate them, make sure that you don't see that they are actually the same assets. Something like this, something like that. And let me press play and see, see how it's looking. Play. Now it does see it does look like a like a sea of clouds and I have clouds there and there and there and the last thing we need to do is test the test the level see if everything is doable everything is possible I hate this part I really hate that part Yeah, I can do it, I can do it. It's so tricky that jump. 
You don't even know. Dude. I can't be that bad. Usually with those type of jumps. It's better to do it from the side. Yeah, like that. Finally. Got the blue key. This is a simple cheat. I just die and... I return there. Want this checkpoint. Let's see if this is working. Probably that needs a sound. I forgot completely about that. So... I mean, it, it's good. Because the punish... The punishment is not that bad. We got the red key. We probably can skip most of the way back. Going here. Then here it is. Would be a lot better if if my character faced to the other side, but that could be uh, something that you guys can add in your project. So everything's working correctly. Something that I forgot to add before wrapping up the video was some particle effects. Here there should be something called pollen. And I'm gonna drag and drop it here. And it gives me these types of particle effects of things flying to make everything a little bit more magical. And I'm gonna drag and drop one, duplicating it here. Just so I have this kind of effect everywhere in my map. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. And now that the map is finished, also, it's good to label everything we've done. For example, everything with BP and an underscore should be, except these ones, gameplay elements. We can create a folder. Call it how do I rename it? There it is. Gameplay. Then with this in mind, I can go through for example these wind systems should be VFX. The pollen also. No? How is it called then this these two assets? New folder no, not new folder, excuse me. Let me delete the new folder. Oh, did I delete everything here? Win system, BFX. What's this name? BFX Pollen Magic Camera Fade. Let's search for that. BFX. What? Why, why can I find them? Should be around here. Well, for some reason it's not showing up. Well, the lights... I can... Add... To a folder called... Lighting. And most of the... 
the meshes will be the level you can leave it like this or you can also send everything there and separate it maybe with level environment obstacles etc but it's a good a good habit to organize your outliner this player start should also be in gameplay some lights here skylights let's move into light but it's a good idea because if you go back to this level in maybe some weeks or after months it is a good idea to to have it categorized and in a easy way to find any asset that you may need so when i press play i should have those those little dots and I, I don't know what happened to the other one so I'm gonna duplicate this one probably it got deleted without me knowing but now I see it be sure to save And after saving, be sure to check it out. Now it's looking a lot better. Got my clouds. That one looks a, 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 little, a little bit weird. But I'm not going to get too picky about it. One thing I did forget to add was my coins. Usually the coins <laughs> will guide the player. So let's just add them really, really quickly. Where's my pickups? coins should the first one should be here the second one should be here if you don't want the player to skip this part you can just duplicate them here i'm gonna put another one in the top so they know they should be able to reach them i'm gonna put three coins here gonna put a coin here so this will probably be a point where they are very likely to fall down I could put like some X here, coins, and last but not least, some coins leading to that. Here, I'm gonna put a coin in each one of these platforms. So if they want all the coins, they will need to jump on each of these platforms. And this one really doesn't need a coin because we have a key here. Again, a coin here, maybe a bunch of coins here. And now whenever we play, we will have these coins. They are a little bit static. I don't, don't like that, Makes make it seem so, I don't know, boring. So I'm gonna make them rotate. I'm gonna open the coin, gonna go to the base pickup, and here I'm gonna add rotating movement. Compile. This will make all my pickups rotate, even the keys. The key, I really don't want it to rotate, so move, rotating movement. I'm gonna uncheck this auto activate, compile it, and in the coin, I'm gonna check the auto activate so only the coins and i'm gonna simulate only the coins will be moving like that and the keys will stay static if you want to create a hovering movement you can also we can also do that through components here there should be an 
enter to movement. Again, I don't want this movement to auto activate first, but let's check how it is moving. It, I don't want it to be a one shot. Ping pong should be fine. Teleport type is fine. Sweep, check if it's still in world. I need to define these control points, so I'm just gonna put the first one at zero zero and the second one maybe minus 40. The duration will be 0 0.7. Compile, save it, and we will see now what happens with this. And it's really not a smooth a smooth movement, but for me it works. You want a smoother movement, then you can this control point made it to minus 10. Add another one. Minus minus 30. And here our end goal was minus 40. That should smooth things up a little bit. Just a little bit. Also, this one, I should disable that auto-activate and it was still a bit stiff, so let me put minus 5, 35, here it is. Save it, compile it, and the coin, I don't want it to move, I only want the key to move up and down. So here in the key, I will activate that interp to movement, compile it, save it. And now I can see the key moving around as expected. So if I do play the game, I will see something moving there up and down, which should really call my attention. I see the gate, the red gate, a key. And now I can start getting those coins. And the rotation is too much for me. Let's change the rotating movement to maybe a third of it. Let's see if that's working for us. Yeah, and that's pretty good. Let's keep it like that. To recap this tutorial, we have seen Blueprint Fundamentals also gameplay development and a little bit of level design. We have created a game from scratch. We have also added gameplay mechanics using blueprints and created a level that can be played and shared with your friends. The next steps for this is that you can use this knowledge to be able to design more levels and create your own gameplay mechanics so the game becomes more unique and also it will open the door to the exploration of all the features inside the engine. If you reach the end of this tutorial, be sure to check the comments to find a coupon code for one of our premium courses, only available for the first 100 people. Also, if you liked what you saw and want to support our work while leveling up your game dev skills, make sure to check our recommended resources where you can find plenty of tutorials made by industry professionals.